Hello teachers, welcome back to section 13-3 where we're talking about the Pythagorean Theorem. In part one of the video, we spent a lot of time talking about the Pythagorean Theorem, special cases of triangles including the 45-45-90 triangle and the 30-60-90 triangle, and then using the converse of the Pythagorean Theorem. In other words, using side measurements to show that you did have a right triangle. Well, now I want to apply this Pythagorean theorem to other applications. So for instance, the distance formula. So we're right now, we're going to try to build the distance formula from this problem right here and then write a generic formula that we can use every time. So our goal in this problem is to find the distance between the point C, which is 2, 5, and this is in an X, Y axis. So remember, we go over to X equals 2 and up 5. So this is why this is 2, 5, X is 2, Y is 5. And then the other point D is the point 6, 8. So the X value is 6, the Y value is 8. So notice the X value is over at 6, and then you go up to Y is equal to 8, and this is 8 right here okay I want to know how long this line is now if it's in a coordinate plane like this is it's not as simple as just saying you know mile marker 33 minus mile marker 22 we've driven 11 miles it doesn't work that way when you're in the XY axis because you have coordinates here so what could we possibly do to find this length well we can turn this into a triangle so here's what I'm gonna do and then I'm going to show you a better version of this. I'm going to turn this into a right triangle. So I'm going to come over vertically, okay, like that, and then come down. I mean, I said vertically, horizontally, come down vertically. Now, what that did is that created a right triangle. You okay with that? Now, this point right here, if I were to label it, we know that the x value is the same as this x value because it's just this one's just right above it. So that would be the point 6. And then the y value is the same height as this one over here. So that would be the point 5. That's 6, 5. Okay. Now, how's this going to help? You know what? I know the length of this. Why do I know the length of this but not the one that's at a slant? Because, look, the y values are the same. So if I'm traveling from 2 to 6. That's like going from mile marker 2 to mile marker 6, right? Well, that's like 4 miles, right? So the diff distance between 2, 5 and 6, 5 is 4. How about the distance between 6, 5 and 6, 8? Now again, because they're both at the same x value, I can just subtract my y values and say, hey, this line is 3 units long. How's that going to help me find my distance over here? Well, we have a right triangle, right? So this is a leg, and this is a leg. I'm looking for my hypotenuse. So I can say 4 squared. All right, so 4 squared plus 3 squared is equal to C squared. So that's 16 plus 9 is equal to C squared. So I have 25 is equal to C squared, and C is 5. Okay, so I know my length of this line segment now is 5. And the way I found it was by using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, now we can generalize that, and that's going to give you a formula. By the way, I want to point out, you recognize this 3, 4, 5 triangle? It's called a perfect triple. And this section doesn't really discuss perfect triples very much, but a perfect triple is when you use the Pythagorean theorem or you say, something squared plus something squared equals the other thing squared and they're all nice whole numbers it doesn't happen as often as you might think the more you use the Pythagorean theorem the more you realize that perfect triples are there's not a big list of them but three four five is very common where three and four are the leg links and five is the hypotenuse now what I'm going to do is show you a more structured drawing of what we just did to solve this problem there it is right there, okay? So notice what happened. They, they did the same thing here. We turned this line segment by coming straight across here, which was that length four that we talked about. If you move from two over to six, that's four units. And then the length three vertically, if you move from five up to eight, that's three units. Because if you keep one of the coordinates 
constant, the five stayed the same for the y's, then you just work with the x's, okay? And they showed you how they found that distance, three, and again, why did they put absolute value? Because it doesn't matter the order you subtract. If you decided to do eight minus five versus five minus eight, we're talking about a distance. And so that's why they use the absolute value symbol here and down here. Okay, so that's how we use the Pythagorean theorem. It's exactly what I did, just a little more structured the way they wrote it. And then here is the work that we did. And again, that side length is five. But the reason I'm showing you this problem is so I can show you the development of the distance formula. So not just for the points 2, 5, and 6, 8, and what is the distance between them, but there's a formula that we can use to find the distance between any two points in the coordinate system. So let's see if we can do this. So look, you've got this point here and this point here. We named them x1, y1. That's the lower one, a, and the higher one over here, x2, y2. Now, if you take this distance, the horizontal distance that we talked about earlier, we just subtracted our x values, that's here. So this is one of our legs, okay? What about this distance over here? where we just subtracted y values, there it is, that's the other leg. Let's use the Pythagorean theorem. That's going to find this distance, and I'm going to call it d this time. So I can say that the absolute value of x2 minus x1 squared, when I use the Pythagorean theorem, right, plus absolute value of y2 minus y1 squared, is equal to the hypotenuse, which is d squared. Okay, a couple of comments I want to make about this. When you take an absolute value and you square it, it's positive, right? What if I just left off the absolute values? What if I got rid of that? Do you still get a positive number? And you should say, yes, Miss Wilson, why? Because when you square a number, it turns positive. So I don't need the absolute values in either of these because I'm squaring it, okay? Now, if you still had variables in here, that would be something to think about, okay? But if you have just numerical values in here, it's going to turn positive. So this is what we have. But you know what they do? The distance formula, when they give it to you, they saw, you don't want d squared. You want d, right? What did we do every time to find d when we had d squared, or c when we had c squared? We took the square root. So you take the square root of this side, and you take the square root of this side. You know what I mean? You know what happens when you take a square root? You're supposed to put a plus or minus. But when you're talking about the Pythagorean theorem, and you're talking about the length of a side or a distance, it's always positive, so you don't need the plus or minus. Now, what that's going to do is that's going to give us our formula. The distance, I'm going to write it at the top of the screen and then show you the typed version. Distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. All that is is the Pythagorean theorem. And again, let me show you the typed version. There we go. Now, instead of calling it D, like I did, they called it AB. Is that okay? Absolutely. That just means the, the measure of line segment AB. But notice the x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And that is your distance formula. All it is is the Pythagorean theorem. Now, here we have a problem. We want to show that the point A, which is 7, 4, the point B, which is negative 2, 1, and the point C, which is 10, negative 4, are the vertices of an isosceles triangle. Okay? Then show that triangle ABC is a right triangle. Whew! We've got some work to do here, don't we? So what are we going to do? Okay, now first of all, we're trying to show that this is an isosceles triangle. What's the definition of an isosceles triangle? Well, we know that two sides are the same length. So we better start finding the lengths of some sides, right? So first, I'm going to find the length of line segment AB. Because I, I noticed this first. So I'm doing these two guys together first. Let's plug that in the distance formula. So that's the square root, remember, of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Let's plug in. Okay. Now, which one do you want to be x1 and which one do you want to be x2 
that sort of thing. I tend to keep them in order. Let's say this is x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. But if you would have liked to call these the twos and these the ones, that's perfectly okay. Okay, so here we go. x2, which is negative 2, minus x1, which is 7. Don't forget the square on the outside. Plus y2, which is 1, minus y1, which is 4 and then the square. So make sure you understand we're just plugging in the coordinates and how to do that. You might want to label them first. Then what's the next step? Subtraction, because we have parentheses. Remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, order of operations, parentheses are first. Negative two subtract seven is negative nine. Then we're gonna square it, but not yet. One subtract four is negative three, and then we're gonna square it. And see what I mean about negative numbers are gonna turn positive? That's going to happen now. Negative 9 squared is positive 81. Negative 3 squared is 9. And this is why it doesn't matter which one you call x1, y1, and which one you call x2, y2, because when you square those differences, it turns positive anyway. And that gives me the square root of 90. Now, I'm supposed to know how to simplify this. Remember, I can write 90. Well, there's two ways I can do it. I can do the prime factorization of 90 and break that down completely, which was going to be 3 squared times 2 times 5. I didn't do that in order. But because we have a square right here, the square root of 3 squared we know is 3. So I'm going to say that this is equal to 3 comes out of the square root symbol, but the 2 times 5 has to remain. In other words, that's 3 square root of 10. You also could have looked at it like this. The square root of 90 is equal to 9 times 10. The square root of 9 is 3. That comes out, and that leaves you the square root of 10. Really, it's whichever you feel more comfortable with. The prime factorization method is really better in the sense that when you're dealing with really large numbers, it's easier to break down your square root problem. Okay, now if I can fit it over here, and I'm going to do this in green so they don't run together, I'm going to go ahead and calculate the distance between negative 2, 1, and 10, negative 4, and that's BC. Okay, so the distance between line segment BC is the square root of, okay, let's call this one x1, y1, and this one x2, y2. Okay, so I'm going to say 10 minus the negative 2 square it, plus negative 4 minus 1, putting commas where I should be putting minuses, and square it. Remember, order of operations, parentheses first. 10 minus a negative 2 is 12 squared, plus negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5 squared. Notice I dropped the parentheses around the 12 just because it was a positive number, but the parentheses around the negative 5 had to stay because I have a negative number in here, which I still have to square. So now line segment BC, the measure, the measure or the length of that is going to be equal to the square root of 144 when I square the 12. And then negative 5 squared is 25. So that gives me BC is the square root of, that's going to be what, 169. And then the square root of 169 is 13. Okay, so I know that BC is equal to 13. Now, I am not finished at all, right? i, I got to find a third side. <clears throat> Excuse me, please. What's my third side? Well, and I, I'm running out of room. Okay, so third side. I'm going to leave third side up to you. But we have not found the distance between A and C. Right? We did A to B together, we did B and C together, but we need to do A and C. So how about you pause it, use that distance formula a third time, and then we'll see if we can't answer these questions. How'd it go? I'm going to do this one a little bit faster, or maybe not, but I do want you to see how yours compares. So we're doing line segment AC, so my big square root. I'm going to subtract my X value, so 10 minus 7. Don't forget to square it. I'm going to subtract my y values, negative 4 minus 4. Again, don't forget to square it. Okay, keep moving down. 
I got the square root. 10 minus 7 is a positive 3 squared. Negative 4 minus 4, that's not 0, right? That's negative 8 squared. Now, crazy mistakes that students make. I want you to be very aware of so you can fix your students or fix yourself if you happen to do this. I understand the square root of a square. They cancel each other out. But that's only true when you have a product or a single square root under the square here. When you're adding, you can't do that. Okay, so I can't take the square root of 3 squared and say that's 3, and the square root of negative 8 squared and say that's 8 or negative 8. You must square each of these and then add them together. Okay, so AC is equal to the square root of 9 plus 64, and then that gives me that AC is the square root of 73. Now, how about the square root of 73? Can that simplify it all? What do you think? All right, so we're going to we're going to call it. So the square root of or I'm sorry, the distance between A and C or the line segment AC has a length of the square root of 73. Now we might want to pull in because this was on two separate pages. You might have it all on the same page. I'm going to go back and look. Remember that we had uh, AB as the square root of 90, which is 3 square root of 10. And we had BC as, and I shouldn't put the line over it. Remember, the line over it means the segment. Without the line means the, the how long it is. So BC is equal to, and I had 13. Now, we were trying to show that these were or were not the sides of an isosceles triangle. Well, are any two sides the same length? And you would say no. So this is not an isosceles triangle. Okay, now as you know, if you've watched any of my videos, always leave the typed version there. Um, I got these from the textbook. So a lot of this I'll add to the PowerPoint when I think it's missing information, but the problems that they have already created, I leave there. Um, so we can check ourselves, and even more important, so we can compare our work to their work because there's more than one way to get the answer. So I want you to look at their work and see what you think about this. Okay, so there it is. They, they conveniently fit it all in one page, which is awesome. They found the length of AB, which is 3 squared to 10. That ought to look familiar. Okay, so that is AB. They found BC to be 6 square root of 5. And so, you know, when I did my work, I panicked a little bit. It's like, oh, no, I did it wrong. And that's easy to do, right? It's easy to get the distance formula wrong. There's a lot of work that goes in there. And then AC, they also have as 3 square root of 10. And I thought, surely I have really messed this up. But you know what? We did it right. There is an error, and I want you to pause the video, please, and find the error. Why? Because this is what you're going to be doing with your students. You're going to have to find errors all the time, and you need a good eye for this. So now that you know there's an error, I want you to find it and be able to tell this student or this worker, hey, this is where your mistake is, okay? Then I want to talk about their answer, too. But go ahead and pause it and find this error. Did you find it? Okay, and it's really multiple errors. Okay, so here's what's happening. If you look at A, B, okay, just check that things were plugged in properly. So they took negative 2 for my B, X, and 7. Negative 2 minus 7 squared. I'm okay with that, okay? Then they took 1 minus 4, and then they squared it. And they got the square root of 90. As a matter of fact, this is exactly the answer we got. So I was less stressed out over that one. Look at BC. So I'm looking at here's B, here's C. Okay, so this is x2 minus x1, which is 10 minus a negative 2, which is going to be 12. That's what we got squared. Look, the next one, this is y2 minus y1. My y2 is negative 4. Look, they typed in negative 5 here, and they typed in negative 5 here. Okay, that's the error. 
and it's just a substitution error, but it makes the answer incorrect. Now, honestly, what I think should have happened is this is the error. This problem should have said 10, negative 5 rather than um, 10, negative 4. But it still might not come out like they wanted it to. We'll have to analyze that as we go through. But there is something from this problem I want you to see. Because easily, I could have not showed you this page, and we could have just kept going with the handwritten version of this problem. It is correct so far, as far as I can tell. Um, but I wanted you to find the error, but there's also something else I want you to notice. They say AB equals AC, so the triangle is isosceles. See, the one that we calculated is not an isosceles triangle, but they really wanted it to be. So 3 squared to 10 and 3 squared to 10, if you have two sides the same length, you're dealing with an isosceles triangle. Now, we haven't finished our side, okay, but I do want you to see, because what do we still have to do? We have to determine whether we have a right triangle or not. Now, we could do that with our work, okay? As a matter of fact, let's do that real quick with our work. So I'm going to go back a page on you with all the handwritten stuff. There it is. And have all the side links listed. So I'm going to erase, for space purposes, this information over here, that this is not an isosceles triangle. Why? Again, because we don't have two sides that are the same length. All three of our sides are different lengths. Now we're supposed to determine, is this a right triangle? Okay, so let's do that work. I'm going to do it in green. Now, we need to know which one of these three is the longest. Okay, so square root of 73, just so you know. So the square root of 73 is about approximately 8.5, okay? 3 times the square root of 10, again, I'm just typing this right in my calculator, is approximately 9.5, okay? And then we know how big 13 is. So 13 is our longest side. So what we're checking is that the square root of 73 squared plus... 3 square root of 10 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. If that is true, then we'd still have a right triangle. So this is 73 when I square the square root. I can do that. Plus, when you have a product, it is okay to square each one. So 3 squared is 9. The square root of 10 squared is 10. Does that equal to, now what is 13 squared? You may know this one automatically 169 again this is still a big question mark is 73 plus 90 equal to 169 well no it's not right it's 163 and that's not equal to 169 so this is also not a right triangle okay now look at their work because we just get a bonus problem out of this so here's the work for their, their error, but remember their error is probably not, I don't know, it's pretty significant. Because, <laughs> because if we change the problem to negative 5, that's not going to make the uh, AEB, the first calculation we had, correct. So there's a lot of work they would have to go into fixing this problem. But anyway... So we square each one. They didn't use the reduced one. They just went back to the square root of 90. We, remember, we had the square root of 90 is written as 3 square root of 10 squared. And then, then this one was the wrong length equals. And then the square root of 180 was could also be simplified. Okay. But it, it doesn't matter. The square root of 90 squared is 90 plus the square root of 90 squared is 90. And this would be 90 down here too, right? Because it would be 9 times 10. Okay, and then the square root of 180 squared is 180. Is that true? Yes, it's true. Therefore, the error problem ended up being a right triangle, but not really because if we fix the coordinate, then we probably don't have a right triangle or an isosceles triangle anymore because one, one of the sides, remember, is with the original information and the two other sides are with the error. So that problem's got all kinds of issues, and I wish I had caught it. Um, before, but not really. I, I'm glad we went over that error because that's what you're going to be spending all your time doing as a teacher is finding errors and being able to talk to students about why they made the mistake they did. And often it's a copy error. All right, here we go. Determine whether the points 
0, 5, 1, 2, and 2, negative 1 are collinear. Ooh, what does that mean we should do? Now, just to save a little bit of time, th this is using the distance formula as well. But by now, I feel like that you're skilled at it. We've done it a lot together. And you will practice it more on your own. So just follow the logic here with me. Okay, so to determine if points are collinear, then that means they don't make a triangle, right? Because if you have three points that are collinear, remember what that means? They lie in a line, in a single line. There's a line that can be drawn through them. That means it's not a triangle. All right, so you can determine if this builds a triangle or not by doing what? Finding lengths of the sides again. So we need to find the distance between point A and point B the distance between point B and point C, and the distance between point A and point C, just like we did for the last problem. And we're going to check their work, by the way, but it is here, okay? All right, now, here's the, here's the goal. It says, if they are not collinear, they would be the vertices of a triangle, and hence AB plus BC would be greater than AC. Now, this is not from this section. Remember the triangle inequality? that says always, if you have a triangle, even if it's some skinny triangle like this, that this side plus this side has to be bigger than this side over here. Has to be, because the shortest distance between here and here has got to be this straight line. So if you meander over here and come back over here, that's going to be longer. So that's what they're going to use as the triangle inequality. Okay, now it says if AB plus BC equals AC, that means they're collinear, right? Look at that. So if this is A and this is B, and let's say this is C, if AB plus BC is the same length as all the way from A to C, they must line up in a line. So that's the argument to get this job done. Again, it's the next page of stuff that I know you can do. We're just going to check their work. And again, we probably need to have those points readily accessible for us, but here we go, and I'm going to recopy points for you. So we know that A is the point 0, 5. Let's check their work. B is the point 1, 2, okay, and C is the point 2, negative 1. We're checking that they substituted incorrectly, and then we're going to check their math as well. Okay, so we're not doing the problem this time. We're checking. Hey, pause the video. Please, please, please pause it now and check all this work and see if it's valid. And then we'll check the rest of it to see if it makes sense, if we showed what we needed to show. Okay, so we're checking together. I know you checked it already. So remember, this is x2 minus x1. They put 0 minus 1. Is that okay? Yeah, 0 minus 1. Now, what has to come next? Since they use 0 first for my x's, I have to use the 5 first for my y's, 5 minus 2, and then squared. Sure, that's right. Now, negative 1 squared is 1, plus 5 minus 2, 3 squared is 9, 1 plus 9 is 10, the square root of 10. I believe this one checks out just fine. Let's do this again. So I'm subtracting my x's between b and c. So I've got 2 minus 1 and negative 1 minus 2. That's plugged in correctly. 2 minus 1 is 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3 squared is 9. 1 plus 9 is square root of 10. That checks out correctly. And then I'm checking AC. Okay, so these two together. So they said 0 minus 2. That's correct. Which I do 5 minus a negative 1. That's correct. 0 minus 2 is 2 squared. 5 minus a negative 1 is actually 6 squared. 4 plus 12. No, it's not 12, right? 6 squared is 36. The whole 4 plus 36 is 40. Yes, the square root of 40. I'm just trying hard to find an error, y'all. I don't think this one has one. So, now what are they doing? First of all, which one is the longest one? Right? This is the longest side, for sure. Okay, so we can say that AB square root of 10 plus BC square root of 10, so square root of 10 plus the square root of 10, is that greater than the square root of 40? 
That's what we're trying to find out. If that is true, then this is a triangle. If that is false, then this, we'll check to see if it's collinear. What do you think? So square root of 10, square root of 10, that's two square root of 10. Square root of 40, is that not two square root of 10? How come, right? You can rewrite the square root of 40 as, if you use prime factorizations, 40 breaks down into 2 times 2 times 2 times 5, or 2 squared times 2 times 5. The square root of 2 squared is 2 square root of 10. That's exactly what that is, okay? Or you can write it as the square root of 4 times 10. The square root of 4 is 2 square root of 10. Either way, they're equal. If they're equal, that means they're collinear. They line a line. If the inequality was true, if the two sides add to be bigger than the third side, then it would be a triangle. Excuse me. All right, did, did you follow that logic? I think it's a really, really good problem. Now here I am at my time limit again. These problems take a little while, and I have an entire third topic I need to discuss with you, which is the equation of a circle. So please come back for part three. I promise it won't be 30 minutes long. It'll be a bit shorter, but we have an entire conversation to have about the equation of a circle. Hope you have a good day.